Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon for you. I'm in Chile right now. Uh, my name is Radjer Ulrich. I'm the head of international markets for Cernatur, which is our Servicio Nacional de Turismo, the Tourism Board. And right now, I'm going to give you a little bit of presentation about Chile. Okay, so here we go. Welcome to Chile, where the impossible is possible. We are at the end or the beginning of the world. That depends how you want to see it. So what has happened in Chile lately? We all know that this last one and a half year has been quite different for what all of us were used to. So we had a lot of time to think, to reflect on ourselves with our people, that we work on a daily basis, that we share our lives. So that's what we realized. We understood our strengths and opportunities that we have within the country. One of them, of course, our open spaces, unique culture, our compatibility. In terms of the open spaces, uh, nowadays we speak a lot about social distancing, right? Due the virus, the pandemic. This is something that happens to us naturally in Chile, in the different amazing areas that we have, the driest desert in the world, in the Atacama Desert, places like Rapa Nui Island, Patagonia, Antarctica, all of them with just one of many factors, which is amazing beauty and landscape, even being quite different one of the others. We always said that in Chile, we got many different countries in one. We got unique culture and experiences in terms of food, our wines, uh, the tailor-made experiences that you can uh, have in Chile, where you can understand deeply the way of living of different kinds of people and cultures within the land. Uh, of course, all of them adapted to the geography and the different activities we do there. In terms of confiability, we got a interesting business development all over the country we got our really prestigious uh, healthcare centers, which nowadays is really important, of course. Uh, we have a massive vaccination process, and we count with all the different protocol. That is something we have been working with all the different actors of the tourism industry, of course. So when we can cut back to traveling to our country, uh, travelers, by the way, count with all necessary protocols in order to make it safe. Something which is really important for us, uh, we got Travel to Chile plan in our website, that chile.travel. Here you can see Travel to Chile plan. That's it's really important information where you will find updated information of the different protocols and the needs that you have to travel to Chile when it's possible again in hopefully not such a long time. So that's the official, keep it in mind. So if you got any doubt, it's really useful. Something we always uh, love to mention, it's the vaccination process that we have done within the country, which is really important for all this pandemic or for the future uh, when traveling is getting back again. Uh, the government goals is to have enough by the end of June. So basically in 50 more days, 50 million children vaccinated, which means more or less 80% of the population. Uh, we have a really high vaccination rate in the world. And of course, once having the people vaccinated and with all protocols, it's going to be easier to get slower, slowly back. The impact of the tourism, just to give you an idea in terms of numbers for Chile, our international arrivals compared to 2019 decrease in 75%. And of course, the economic impact with national and international travel has it does 66 percent less than 2019 just to give you an idea in numbers of the country so why chile not because i'm chilean nor because i work for the chilean tourism board chile is an amazing country we've got everything so i'm just going to give you some tips and and, and some reasons so you think it twice or three times if necessary 
First, we are an international renowned destination. What does it mean? If I speak good about Chile, it's not really something so unique for you because I'm Chilean and I work, as I said before, for the board. So we like when some other medias and some other people talk about other country, which is quite impartial. So we have been already selected five years in a row, like the best adventure tourism destination, uh, places that you can miss among other, like for Lonely Planet, for example. And then of course, it's the dramatic change of landscape with that. That's something really important. And as I said before, every part of Chile with their culture um, interactuates with the people because someone who lives in Northern Chile has different cultures, different thoughts about their daily life um, instead of someone that maybe lives in the South. We've got man amazing landscapes uh, this is something that hopefully some of you have been able to experience. And if you haven't come to Chile yet, uh, hopefully you have heard about us and see the amazing places. Torres del Paine is probably one of the most well-known. I don't want to say it's the most beautiful. There are many amazing places, but it's not the most well-known. Um, one phenomenon of nature, which is El Desierto Florido or Blooming Desert, happens one every other year that suddenly you see the desert in full blooms. Usually that happens in September, uh, every two or three years. It depends on, on rain and, and many other factors. So it's something really unique to see. Something that we also have, it's our sky. Uh, sometimes we don't appreciate so much how amazing the sky can be. We have one of the clearest skies of the Southern Hemisphere. We like to call it the natural reserve of stars which has gained and gained more popularity, not among just the scientific area, also among uh, travelers that likes to see it even in the north or the southern part of Chile. And of course, the glaciers, which impacts uh, a lot of people when they see it for first time. Uh, we got 76% of the glaciers of South America are located within Chilean territory. This is something I would like to stop a little bit uh, about sustainability. I believe before the pandemic, of course, but nowadays, even with pandemic, we have more time to think how to make it more sustainable as a destination. Uh, the different actors, DMCs, hotels, uh, smaller villages that we visit, everyone wants to give back to the planet somehow and do it in a better way. That's what we have been choose among the best, 10 best ethical destination in the world. Santiago, the most sustainable city in Latin America. Uh, I want to stop here by the S seal. This is something we did internally as a tourism board uh, for lodging that really gets into getting green in as many aspects as possible for the different categories of lodges. Sometimes there is a bigger hotel, sometimes it's even just a small cottage somewhere lost in between the Andes, which are great. So the idea is to think not just for today, so think really for the future and make it in the best possible way. And best green destination according to the 2020 World Travel Awards. This nature makes uh, Chile a unique place a place where the impossible is possible. Um, right now, I'm going to show you a short video and then I'm going to open up the microphone so you can go to the questions and answer that you may have.
So thank you very much for listening to me. So I will have a, and ask if you have any questions. Hi, thanks very much for your presentation. <laughs> um, and hello to all our viewers. Um, I'm going to be handling the rest of the live elements of today. So hello to everyone. Um, if you do have any questions, um, please do pop them in the chat function um, and we will get them answered today in the next few minutes before the next training session. So I did have a few up my sleeve. Um, what would you say is the best way to get to Chile from the UK and Ireland? I mean, what flight routes are available? Uh, I mean, today, unfortunately, our borders are closed mm -hmm. due to the pandemic uh, momentarily. But usually you can fly from different places from the UK. Usually you fly into Santiago, which is our mm -hmm. international airport. Uh, and from then you start moving within the country. That's where most of the people comes to Chile. Um, and then, well, there are some other people that may come from Argentina, maybe through uh, ship, for example, from Ushuaia to Punta Arena and through other borders within the country that connects mainly with Argentina and Bolivia in a smaller portion in, in northern Chile as well. Okay, great. And, and is, is there a best time of year to visit Chile? I mean, are there any benefits to visiting at different times of year? You can come and visit Chile all year round, but definitely most of the people uh, usually comes between uh, September, mid-September up to end of April, I will say. Those are the months which is our best weather. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's important to mention that Chile is not Chile, actually. Uh, I mean, if you go far south, of course, you, you will find some cold, you will find some rain and some snow sometimes in, in some places. But it's not really as cold as some other cities uh, in Northern Hemisphere, for example. Okay, great. We've had a question coming from Lucy. Um, she's asking about sports tourism events. Do, do you have, does Chile have a strong boxing culture? Boxing? Boxing, yes. Um, there is, it's not really a so strong boxing culture, but, but there is definitely, um, we got some, not so famous, but some boxers uh, years ago. Nowadays, what I can tell you is not such a competition professional, mm -hmm. but there is a lot of people practicing a little bit more boxing, you know, like, yeah. But definitely sports are something that uh, comes naturally to Chile. Actually, one of the slogans that somehow we have as a country is El Gimnasio Natural del Mundo, which will be in English, natural gym of the world, because you got so many different landscapes and geography along the entire country that it's naturally to develop many different sports related activity like kayak, uh, mountain bike, trail running, and many, many others, skiing, many others, yeah. Okay. Um, Kerry has said she's had an inquiry come in that includes fly fishing in Chile. Do you have any recommendations for fly fishing, any itineraries or destinations that are particularly good for that kind of holiday? Yes, uh, definitely uh, fly fishing. Normally the season is from November to April uh, in Chile. Uh, usually, I, do, I cannot say just one spot because the other people, it's going to kill me. But the most well-known areas, you will see the Lake District area. There's a really nice area which is called Puelo, it's a river. It's a really good area for fly fishing. Then also you got the Aysen region, a little bit further south, which is quite famous for, for fly fishing as well, with small lodges in, in really nice, nice places. So this will be also one of the other places. And then it's down deep uh, Patagonia in, in Fireland, maybe, or Magallanes. It will depend a little bit of what type of fly fishing or if any specific type of fishes uh, the person is looking for. Okay. And, and Sarah has asked about the average length of stay in the country for UK travelers. I mean, um, how long would you recommend uh, people stay in Chile and, and tour the country? And what are the must, the must see and do places? Yes, of course. Uh, I would love to say people stay a month, but most of people, we don't get vacation for a month. From UK specifically, I will say that most of the people stay average like two weeks. Uh, two weeks, it's a good amount of time to see a good glimpse of the country. But definitely what I always recommend to people, it's not try to see everything in two weeks. Maybe choose by areas. Maybe you said, you know what, I want to see the Atacama Desert. 
maybe I will spend in that specific area, maybe four or five days. And then I will connect a little bit. If like you are traveling to Santiago, people when fly in, normally they spend one or two nights in Santiago area or on the way back home. So they can see the Andes mountain. If it's winter time here, you can go. We have really good skiing. Uh, you got the ski areas and two hours away, you got the Pacific Ocean where you can see Valparaiso, for example, and in between pass through the valleys of Casablanca and learn a little bit more of our wine culture. Uh, and then you can spend another five days in the Lake District, five days in, in uh, Patagonia, in Magallanes. I always will say that most of the most well-known areas of Chile demands at least four nights, five days to see it properly. Okay, great, thank you. And would you say Chile is a luxury destination for uh, UK clients? Um, or do you think it's possible to do Chile on a budget? What's your, what are your kind of thoughts on that? Uh, in Chile, you will find many options of developing tourism, you know, uh, of, of visiting the country. And, and you will find, once again, it will depend on how luxury uh, the concept is. Because, for, for example, for me, a luxury is to be really far away from most of the people you are in really nice hotel or cabin, you know, with all the services. So I will say that people from the UK that mostly come to the country, they are looking that balance uh, between great experiences. It's always experience in Chile. It's always like the first that people put in their minds. And of course, once you've been the day out exploring, discovering, uh, you want to come back to a nice accommodation, you know, with all the services. Mm -hmm. Yes, we got that in, in, in all the different areas. Okay. And Lucy has asked another question. She's asking, which city or region has the greatest number of hotel rooms or accommodation to support a city-wide event? Um, within Chile, there are different areas. Uh, we do work, of course, through the different convention bureaus. That's the way they call it, you know, for the MICE events. Uh, if you need, you can send me an email later and we have our MICE department. And, and we have a really nice dossier where you can find out what's in every region. But most of, of the regions have enough capacity to host uh, some few hundreds uh, uh, people getting in one event uh, in really nice places, not just in Santiago, also in the south and in the of Chile. OK, great. Um, and I just have one final question for you. We've just got about a minute left. Um, how are you supporting travel agents this year? Are you offering any um, competitions or in booking incentives or any new training opportunities? Um, and, and dare I ask, fam trips? Are there kind of any in the planning stages once, once the borders reopen? Um, you mean for travel agents, UK, for example, right? Yes, yeah. UK travel agents, yeah. So, uh, at this point, we're doing some trainings, of course, and those kind of stuff. Like our borders are closed. We cannot invite them over and do fam but we have it in our mind we are just waiting that the authority here in chile allow the travelers okay great thank you very much that is our cue it is now time to move in to mercury holidays training session so if everyone could please click on that training room and move in there that would be fantastic thank you very much Richard. thank you